Rachel Hope for Nesson.com. Welcome into our fantasy football podcast. It's week 10 of the fantasy football season, and I'm joined by DJ Foster of Fox Sports with a look at the week ahead. DJ, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. Of course. Well, first off, DJ, things to keep in mind. Four teams are on a bye this week, the Bills, Lions, Colts, and Raiders. As always, we're dealing with some injuries, so it's an interesting week ahead. We'll uh, talk about some waiver wire pickups that you can take a look at before it's too late. And uh, first, DJ, I want to mention the quarterbacks. It's an interesting week ahead, and we have Joe Flacco and the Ravens taking on the winless Cleveland Browns. Listen, no one wants Joe Flacco as their starting quarterback, but if you are in need of a guy this week and you're looking for a quarterback, is this potentially the best option out there? Oh, sadly, it's one of them. And you'd think we would be done talking about Joe Flacco as a streaming option but you just can't ignore the matchups this week. A lot of his yards last week came on that 95-yard bomb to Mike Wallace, and he really didn't look good at all. Um, But, again, it's the Browns, and if you're desperate, you may have to look in that direction. A couple other guys I would look at, Carson Wentz is playing Atlanta. Jameis Winston just had a great night against the Falcons. They should be playing from behind, most likely. Um, So Wentz could have a nice little bounce-back spot. And Colin Kaepernick gives you a high floor with some of his rushing stats. They should be down. It should be another game where he gets a lot of garbage time stats. So those are two other guys I would look at. This week is certainly a week for quarterbacks that we would want nothing to do with usually. Uh, right. Another name that I'm hearing being mentioned is Jay Cutler. They take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. Is that someone potentially we can add into our starting lineup, or would you just stay away from him? Uh, actually, I kind of like that one a little bit. Um, I think he, he'd be on the radar. I, I would rather have Wentz and Kaepernick, um, but he's right there with me be- between Flacco and, and Cutler. I would probably actually rank Cutler a little higher. Um, he looks good in this first week back. Chicago has some weapons there, uh, so I, I could see him having a decent, sneaky, decent day. Uh, there was a time not long ago where Cutler was actually a pretty good fantasy quarterback. So it's it's not out of reason that he would uh, have a little bounce-back campaign here to close out the season. Okay, well, as we look for some of these uh, bottom-of-the-tier kind of guys to have great weeks for us, one of the guys that we thought was going to have a breakout year and a great year was Russell Wilson, who really <laughs> hasn't done all that much due to injuries and things of that nature. But he had a season bet this week, throwing for 282 yards, two touchdowns, had a rushing touchdown to go along with it, and was a very good fantasy option at quarterback. So is Russell Wilson someone who is on the birds of having a great second half of the season? He had a great second half of the season last year. Um, I think the big concern with him is obviously the health. He hasn't been right all year long. It was telling, though, that before the Monday night game, he said he felt as good as he had all year, and he came out and he had his best performance of the season. So I think if you're going to get on the wagon, now is probably the time to do so. Um, I could see Russell Wilson becoming a, a more regular, solid QB1. I don't think I'm ready to say he can return to top five quarterback status the rest of the way, but I think he's going to be a little bit more reliable than he has been in the first, you know, nine weeks of the season. As we enter the second half of the season, injuries are just something that we're going to have to deal with at this point. It's just the nature of the game. As far as injuries for this week, some big names that are not 100% include Spencer Ware, who's still in concussion protocol. We're not sure yet if he's going to play for the Chiefs. Uh, Which injury heading into week 10 along those lines of Spencer Ware and some of those big names has the biggest implications for fantasy football owners? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm keeping an eye on Tampa Bay's running back situation. Um, Peyton Barber looks like he's going to get the start at this point, but Doug Martin, if he practices, it's possible that he plays. Um, That could end up swinging a week altogether, just whoever starts there. Um, So I'm keeping an eye on that one. Carlos Hyde, I'm also keeping an eye on. Um, They're saying he's still not ready for contact at this point. Juan Harris looked excellent last week. I mean, really explosive in the pass game, um, was breaking tackles. I mean, looked like a really quality running back. So he's another guy who can really help you out, might still be on the waiver wire. Um, I'm keeping an eye on those two injury situations very closely this week. DJ, there's just slim pickings at this point with running backs. A couple weeks ago, we had a steal like Jay Ajayi still out there, which is hard to believe now that he's putting up (laughs) such big numbers. But it's not the case this time around, unfortunately. 
Um, I have to ask you about one of the guys who's uh, available in a majority of leagues, and his name is Dion Lewis. He's probably yeah. coming back for the New England Patriots this week. Since He hasn't played since he tore his ACL last year, but a possibility we might see him again. Do you have any doubts about picking this guy up? And if you do pick him up, would you play him this week? Uh, I would not play him yet. I want to see what his snap load is. I'm perfectly fine if he goes off and has a 20-point fantasy game with having it on the bench because then I know, okay, I can start playing him going forward. So I'm not going to play him until I see his snap load. I'd be very surprised if he gets more than, say, 15, 20 snaps if he does play this week. Um, So I'm not playing him this week, but I'm absolutely picking him up as a stash candidate Um, I think he can supplant James White as the passing running back in New England. Uh, So down the stretch, fantasy playoffs, if you're in line to make it, you've got a roster spot, you've got some guys you can cut, yeah, go get Deion Lewis for sure. Now's the time to do it because after this week, you're probably not going to be able to get him again. Are there any other running backs that you're looking at along those lines? Yeah, another guy who's coming back from injury who should step into a role, maybe not a substantial one, but could give you RB2, RB3 type value is James Starks and Green Bay. Um, they've been playing Ty Montgomery there, who's basically a wide receiver who's been filling in at running back. Um, Don Jackson, who's got the uh, practice squad, a backup fullback. I mean, they've been playing all kinds of different people at running back in Green Bay. Starks is a guy they know, a guy that they trust, a guy that they can probably give the ball to 10, 12, or 15 times a game, maybe even at the at the highest point, that could give you some fantasy stats. So Starks is a guy I would pick up and hope he's able to come back this week. He practiced last week, maybe in line to start uh, this week. And one last guy, Paul Perkins in New York is starting to get more carries. He had the same amount of touches last week as Rashad Jennings. He's the more dynamic runner, the more dynamic receiver. He's a guy who could really break out towards the end of the, end of the season here going down the final stretch. Uh, Perkins is a guy, if he's still available in your league, go get him now. Perfect. And as far as defenses that we're looking at, streamable defenses, one team that you may want to look at this week is the L.A. Rams. Ryan Fitzpatrick sprained a ligament in his knee, so he might not be good to go when the Jets take on the Rams. And if he doesn't get the start, it will be Bryce Petty, which means that the Rams, they might have a field day out there. Is this one of the defenses that you're looking at? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Rams. (laughs) They're, they're a good defensive unit anyway, and really, whether it's Petty or Fitzpatrick, the interceptions should just come either way. Uh, I could see a couple sacks, a couple interceptions, so they have a nice floor there for defensive stats. It's really hard to predict, you know, when you're going to get a defensive touchdown or a special teams touchdown, but I like L.A.'s defensive unit a lot anyway, and the matchup is definitely right. Okay, perfect. Is there anything else that you want us to keep in mind as we enter Week 10 here? Week 10, so now's the time. Look, if you have a guy who hasn't been producing for the last five, six weeks, maybe he's a big name. Fantasy playoffs are coming up. I would, I would time, it's time to make kind of risky moves. Uh, if trading's still allowed in your league, it's time to kind of push in all the chips. If you're currently out of the playoff picture, Go for it, man. Get these high-variance guys. You may not love Colin Kaepernick. You may not think he's a great quarterback, but with his rushing ability, he's the kind of guy who can get you 30 fantasy points. Maybe you trot him out there and get a little crazy. Um, I just like the idea of if you're down, you got to start making moves. Now is the time. All right, last thing, DJ, is when can we find more from you? Uh, I am on foxsports.com slash fantasy. We have rankings, news, all that good stuff there. And you can find me on Twitter at Fox Sports Foster. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.